It appears that some of the objectors' letters appear to be commenting on a different application, in other words, the one south of Little Tixel Lane, which is not before committee this evening. I say that because this application does not have access from the A51, whereas that application does. <coughs> and as I've already said, the, and it's stated in the agenda, this, app, this site is not prime agricultural land. In addition, the Environmental Health recommends an additional condition that the recommendations in Section 8 and conclusions outlined in Section 9 of the submitted noise report from Orley Acoustics Revision 1, dated the 9th of June 2014, should be implemented in full. Turning now to the photographs. See the aerial photograph of the site. As mentioned before, you can quite clearly see on there Little Tixel Lane to, um, to the south and the A51 running to the north of that triangle. Six photographs. First of all, um, from point one, which is at the southeast corner. It's a higher point and looking down Little Tixel Lane. The site in question is behind the hedgerow, which is on the right hand side of the photograph. Second photograph is looking east, up Little Tixel Lane looking towards the direction the last photograph was taken in. And in this case, the site is behind the hedgerow on the left-hand side of the photograph. And you can see the driveways there to existing residential properties um, on the south side of Little Tixel Lane. The third photograph is, again, looking down Little Tixel Lane. The access is proposed roughly where the arrow is there. It, it's on the right hand side of the road, just this side of the trees on the highway verge. Fourth photograph and the fifth are taken from similar locations. The first one, the four, is within the, within the site. So the hedgerow that you could see before I think you just about see the edge of it at the edge of the photograph. So this is the, the, the field. And you can see in the, in the background behind, behind the horse, you can see um, some trees and hedging again, which is on the embankment above the A51. Image five, taken from a similar location, but this time looking north. Um, the boundary with the A51, again you can you can see in the background, yeah, running up running up there. Um, you can see the land rises as it goes up towards the east. The right of way that is referred to in the report is at the left hand edge of the screen. It literally goes along the um, the field boundary. And final photograph taken from the northwest uh, area of the site and looking in the southeasterly direction. So you've got Little Tixel Lane behind the hedge toward on the right hand side of the photograph. And again, you can see some of the existing properties there. And the A51 is behind the wooded boundary at a lower level than the site on the left. And again, you can see that at that end. On the plans, it's the red edge site boundary. An illustrative layout. As I say, this is for um, illustration purposes only because it is an outline application. But you'll see the reference I made to the development being in the westerly two-thirds part of the site. And the development shown basically runs up to the edge of the um, existing development on the south side of Little Tixel Lane. The 
next uh, image is illustrative uh, again and sh would show the frontage to the pixel light. I, I do give caution on this because it does show a number of bungalows there. It's not a full application and there is no indication of house types. But again, that is a possible um, image of what it could look like. And you can see between the second and third house is where the access would be. And on access, this is the access detail. Um, you, you remember from the photographs there were trees. Um, they are just to the left, indicated there, the existing trees. Um, this is the five, roughly five metres access, and you can see um, pavement put in on the western side, approximately two metres in width, which continues around the corner. And the annotation at the top of the screen says footway to be constructed on the adopted public highway. So this would provide a footpath from the site linking down to the existing um, public footpath. In summary, the proposal is considered to be sustainable development in accordance with policy SP7, the plan for Stafford Borough, and is also in accordance with national policy. The recommendation is to approve subject to section 6 agreement to the conditions listed in the agenda with the, with the addition of the additional environmental health condition that's read out. Thank you. Maybe much indeed, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Lennon, you're objecting to the application. Mr. Lennon? No, it's Councillor Paul Gilbert, actually. Mr. Lennon is the uh, part to the council. Well, could it, could it, but it would help us, sit down, please. But it would help us if we notified who is going to speak. Because he did notify you that it would be me. Well, we've no record of that, I do assume. Uh, well, I can produce the email right, for fine. you to subsequent <clears throat> time if you wish. No. You've got three minutes then to put your case, and I'll indicate to you towards the end uh, for you to set up for me. Start when you're comfortable and ready. Uh, Colwich Parish Council's letters of objection have already drawn attention to the number of issues surrounding this application. I would advise members that Colwich Parish is in the final process of completing its neighbourhood plan and the draft plan will be before the borough shortly. The Secretary of State recently re-emphasised the weight to be given to emerging neighbourhood plans in planning decisions. This planning application lies outside the RDB proposed in the neighbourhood plan. In the absence of guidance from the borough, the parish has calculated that the KSV requirement will be 259 dwellings in our neighbourhood plan. That figure, which excludes the Inglewood development, has already been met. I would refer members to the plea from Mr Manders the College Parish Council, amongst others, should write to the DCLG asking for protection for the plan for Stafford, whilst at the same time the Borough Council planners ignore Colwich's emerging neighbourhood plan. The Borough, by encouraging excessive planning applications, has increased its revenue from application fees and new homes bonus to a figure exceeding £1.5 million but afford no additional funding to the parishes for which, which are then expected to provide the amenities for all these new developments. Nor can the development areas expect any additional support from SIL as the borough has failed to adopt it. Members skillfully refused the application from the Moore Family Trust, which, had it been successful, would have destroyed valuable ag agricultural land this application rides roughshod over the agricultural value of this grazing land. We need to go. And planners, in recommending this application, ignore the values this committee set when it refused the Moore Family Trust application. I am extremely concerned with the apparent process of use linked to this application. Someone had issued a directive to the, for the planning report to be completed by the 12th of December in order that the application would be heard today. The unusual haste related to the inside knowledge that the site will be outside the RDV raises my anxiety. 
these issues need to be examined in conjunction with the conflict of interest associated with this application, i.e. Councillor Heenan's position as an officer of Inglewood Investments Company, the owner of the land, which costs less than £50,000, and its fiduciary obligations to maximise shareholder value, which conflicts with his duty to represent the interests of his constituents. As elected representatives, Can you we have a, for me now, as elected representatives, we have a moral obligation to look to the interests of our constituents first until the issue of conflict is determined. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Can I go back to your seat now? Mr. Fergus, you're supporting the application. You have three minutes in total, and I'll indicate you towards the end for you to sum up. Please start when you're comfortable, with me. <coughs> Chairman and members, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak in support of the planning application by the Inglewood Investment Company, which I urge you to permit. My name is Graham Fergus of First City Limited, agent for the application, and beside me I have Tom Follows, director of the applicant company. As many of you know, the Inglewood Investment Company are based in Stafford, and have owned this site since 1987. The company are an experienced developer. I compliment your officers on their written report. The conclusion is that this site punches above its weight and is considered to be sustainable. That is why it has their support. The reasons for supporting this application are clear. This is a small-scale small development on a well-contained site. The shape of the site is gradient and equestrian use all confirm that it is of limited value for agricultural production. The Parish Council, Parish Council would like you to consider the application to be premature to the emerging neighbourhood plan. However, the cold the Colwich Neighbourhood Plan has not been submitted, publicised by the Council, or examined. So it, so it is at an early stage. Therefore this, therefore, this proposal cannot be considered to be premature to the Neighbourhood Plan. The application, application will provide off-street parking. It will, it will tackle an affordable housing shortfall, and the illustrative layout shows bungalows that, go. that appears to be welcomed by local people. The education contributions and enhancement to open space included in the application are also benefits. We support your office's view that through planning conditions, technical solutions can be delivered because the issues identified in the report all have agreed solutions. Securing outline planning permission will give Inglewood a housing site that it intends to bring forward for development in 2015. I therefore urge you to support the recommendation in your officer's report. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much indeed. If you'd like to go back to your seats now, please. Councillor Tappanow and Councillor Perkins, you call this in, so if you'd like to go to the table. You have five minutes each, and I'll indicate to you towards the end for you to sum up. You go in whatever order you want to go. You start when you're comfortable and ready. Um, 
stuff now. I will start as soon as I get on the train, Mr. Chairman. Right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, members. We're here again with another housing application in the rural area of Stafford Borough. A developer applying to shoe on 47 dwellings into a triangular piece of agricultural land. Reported by the locals to be of agricultural grade two, but according to the Stafford Borough Council planning officers, it is worse than grade three. No one has shown any, any qualified statement regarding this. This piece of land is a triangular in shape and the apex is in the southeast widening to the northwest. The fall of the land is from the high point in the southeast down towards the wider edge of the northwest end. This land has two natural watercourses passing down through the site from the southeast to the northwest and regularly floods, blocks and causes tremendous problems with surface water from the south and from the south of other sites, which is much higher. Once hard dwellings and roads are built on there, the surface water will be flowing from southeast down the site towards existing houses on Essex Drive and Oldfield Road, adding to the existing problems already experienced in Grace Hayward and identified on previous applications which have come before this committee and promised by certain trends water that they will overcome the flooding but never do so. These problems still occur all around the village of Great Hayward and Little Hayward. It's not sufficient for Southern Trent Water and the Environment Agency to state how they will overcome this problem, and this application should be refused until satisfactory assurances to the problem can be given, if they can. Similarly, the same assurances should be made for the extra sewerage generated by this site into already overloaded systems in Great Hayward, Little Hayward, and Hickson identified again in recent applications in Little Hayward, Great Hayward and Eastman, which have all been debated on a number of occasions with this committee and accepted. Another overload situation in Great Hayward is the surgery, already bursting at the seams, needing to accept another 200 patients from this site, together with 300 from the main road, Great Hayward site, passed recently, and another 100 from the upper Coley Lane site passed recently, and to add to that, the closing of the Hickson surgery. Highways, now for the laugh. This site is adjacent to the recent application of, which was originally 152 houses, but is now seven, was now 77, which was refused out of highway concerns. This application that we're looking at now is showing 45 dwellings in that time application. But what is the full application going to ask for? Little Tixel Lane is reduced to one lane by traffic, parked vehicles for most of the day. This site will generate a minimum of 130 plus vehicle movements a day, and with pavement on one side only, it's a, again a menu for disaster. Little Tixel Lane, as it states, before the A51 bypass was built, was a farm track serving up the Coley Farms. It had been surfaced when the A51 bypass was built, but has never been widened and is certainly not to carry, fit to carry this sort of tra traffic to and from Great Haywood, despite the, what highways say, I'm afraid. The report, is, uh, the report states that this development will act as a sound buffer to the east edge of the A51, reducing traffic noise to existing residents of Tixel Lane which back onto this site. Does this mean that the new residents have to suffer the noise of the A51 problem when these houses are built? So there is an, a noise problem, obviously, there on the site. If so, not building this development will mean that the new properties will be nearer the A51 and have to suffer this increased noise. Wildlife is abundant in this area. Wild birds, badgers, great crested newts, due to two water courses and flooding, plus general na nature and wildlife. The area is also used for grazing horses and other equine activities. Public service. There is no public service people serving this. For the, for the residents, the nearest bus stop is in Great Haywood. Basically, to take into consideration all the facts you've heard from, from this uh, report and the 
transfer from the other objector, this, the application is not sustainable uh, in accordance with SP7. It was not indicated on the Charlotte, it is a greenfield site, it does, will have a adverse effects on services, amenities and open space. Stafford Borough Council had a five-year housing supply with a 20% number. It does not fully the SP3 and SP4. There are other matters which need to be addressed before approving this application, particularly the emerging uh, plan for neighbourhood plan for college. Therefore, I respectfully ask you to refuse this application. Thank, Thank you, Councillor. Sorry about that, Mr. Chairman. You have had well over your five minutes. Thank, Thank you kindly. That was very good. Uh, Councillor <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Uh, well, I'll take under five minutes then and give Councillor Perkins some of my time. <coughs> so I support everything that um, Councillor Perkins has said um, over well, all the various issues that are in the, the Great Hayward, but I can't understand um, why highways have no objections to this uh, because Little Tixer Lane, as the word lane suggests, is, is, that, is just what it is, a narrow country lane, not built for significant amount of traffic. In some places it's single track and narrow, where cars do, and it's narrow where cars do manage to pass. It is also a rat run between Great Hayward and Little Hayward as motorists do not like driving over the speed bumps in Great Hayward. It's quite true, that is. Um, and as Councillor Perkins has said, cars are parked along Little Tixel Lane um, where the houses are all the time. And it's difficult, and you've got the uplands as well with um, 100 houses that come out onto Little Tixel Lane. It, it, it's just horrendous, the traffic is there. Um, and on page 42, uh, the paragraph at the top, it says, um, the footway would benefit the residents of the proposed scheme if the 77 unit development were to go ahead in that they would need to walk in the road. And if the 77 unit development did not go ahead, the footpath would be pointless. I mean, a footway in Little Tixel Lane will never be pointless because there are a lot of residents that go for walks with and without a dog regularly along the lane towards Coley Lane. Widening could be beneficial, providing for walkers it didn't result in higher speed in traffic. I mean, we're told, we're always reminded of this, if we bring in another application or something what might be, we were told it can't be considered. So I can't understand why it is in the report that you should consider the other planning application that hasn't come um, to the committee or been decided on. I think that should be irrelevant. And I think it should be just looked on at, at the merits of this one planning application. Um, and I hope that the public rights of way across that field is kept open at all times because the, the public rights of way in, in the college parish are well used. And I know that from where we live. Um, and of course we've got the ongoing um, sewage and flooding problems. And even with mitigation, it's, there's still problems. They never seem to be able to solve them. In our, any of the villages. Um, oh, and, and on, on the top of page 43 about um, the community sum for leisure and open space, I, I have looked into that and asked if any of that money will be allocated to, to the local community and I've been assured that it would and I'm hoping that is the case. Um, because the Jubilee playing field is now being uh, having additional uh, play areas done and uh, well I don't know what they're going to do with this PC yet of the field, we've not been told that we need to go um, thank you chairman um, 
And I'm hoping that although the layout is indicative, that Inglewood Investments stick to what they have promised. And that is that we do have some bungalows if um, the committee are mindful to uh, permit this. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. Both stay at the table and you can raise any matters of clarification. I emphasise clarification. You cannot argue with or debate with the officers uh, some of the statements. Before I turn this over to uh, debate, uh, Mr. Holmes wants to come back. Four points. First of all, in relation to what Councillor Tabernum was saying about road winding and footpaths, she is perfectly correct. Um, we cannot take the impact of another development into account in terms of this. So, if you look on page 39, the penultimate paragraph, the last sentence says, as such, it is not considered reasonable to apply a condition in respect of requiring provision of a footpath and road widening as they relate to the impact of another development proposal and do not arise as a result of the development itself. So, what she said is completely correct. Highways were suggesting something that is not directly attributable to this application and therefore, as we say in the report, that cannot be justified. Next, Councillor Perkins referred to agricultural land quality and he said there wasn't any evidence of what category it is. But if you look on page 37, under the heading Loss of Agricultural Land, you'll see it says society shown as Grade 3 Local Planning Authority records, not Grade 2 as reported by local objectors. Described as good to moderate level in the agricultural land classification map for the West Midlands. So it does tell you in the report. And now to Mr Gilbert. Two points. First of all, he referred to a neighbourhood plan. The parish council comments received yesterday said it will be before the borough council shortly. My understanding is that the Parish Council have not as yet done the statutory six-week um, consultation before submitting it to the Borough Council. In any case, it does not have weight until it is formally submitted. Um, I haven't been given the date as to when that will be, but the references to other cases that the Parish Council made is, con is considered in the report and you'll see on page 34 that the two Wiltshire cases were at a much more advanced stage in that they had been formally submitted to the authority and in the case of one of them it had um, one was under examination and the other was about to exa enter examination before we can get to that, Harwich Parish Council would have to undertake the statutory um, pre-submission consultation, which has to take six weeks, before submitting it to the authority. The authority, this borough council, then considers the plan before putting it forward um, for examination. So the stage, I think, I think it was implied to you they were at a very similar stage, but you'll see that that is not the case. Uh, Mr Gilbert also was making some allegation by the sound of it about a directive to complete the report by a particular time period. I don't know who he's implying gave that directive, but again, if you look on the agenda at page 31, it tells you on this agenda, as it does on all the other applications, what the target decision date is for the application. This target decision date is the 16th of January. That is a statutory 13-week target for a major application, and that is something that this authority is judged on. It is our responsibility to get as many applications as possible determined by the target date. So, in, in terms of his suggestion, then this is the last available committee before that date. So, it, it's entirely reasonable to take this application to this committee. Thank you. Councillor Perkins, a matter of clarification. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman. If, if a uh, parish council is 
raising a neighborhood plan and it is in the process of gathering all the information, surely that plan is emerging. At what stage you would call it emerging? It's, it's emerging. It will emerge one day. I, I think to say it's not emerging is... I'm not saying it's not emerging, I'm saying it has no weight. It has no weight until this is formally submitted to us. Thank you, Chair. Um, it, it is unfortunate that um, this development is not considered in the context of the neighbourhood plan. It seems that piecemeal developments of Great Haywood and Colwich will continue to take place, compounding problems with uh, public services. I have sympathy for the, the residents, but it will be difficult to object to this on planning matters. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to debate, please? Councillor Lillichard. Thank you, Chairman. As I understand plans, NPPF is at the top of the list. The local plan cannot object or cannot go against the national plan. Whatever we drew up had to be conformed to what the government were recommending. When it comes to the community plan, I understand the same thing applies. The community plan can't go off at a tangent without reference to the local plan. But in any event, as has been rightly pointed out, there is no local uh, community plan at present. On the question of flooding, which comes up regularly in relation to the Haywards, the Environment Agency have raised no objections. Certain trends have raised no objections. And I don't see how we, as lay people, can go against these uh, agencies. On the question of agricultural land, I've gone on about that for fact, at some length. But the last time I raised it, I seem to recall that when you are considering the loss of valuable agricultural land, a lot depends on the size of the land you're talking about. And if, if it doesn't reach a certain size, then it's not something that we need to give a lot of attention to. Um, the heritage people were consulted and they say there are no assets. That's also interesting in the comments of the county archaeology because to, to this evening we've had reference made to uh, ridge and furrow marks of this particular land. And in fact, the county archaeologist said that there are no assets here. Highways raised no objection. They did actually say there's no requirement to widen the lane. That's their opinion, and they are again of the experts. And it strikes me that all the objections that have been raised have been raised against the recommendations from people with the qualifications to know. And therefore, I would like to propose that this application is approved, subject to the conditions set out in the officer's report. Thank you. Second, by. Anyone? Seconded by Councillor Jones. Right. Thank you. I've got a proposition and a second. I'm going to continue the debate at this stage, obviously. Councillor Jones. Thank you, Chairman. I just wonder where we're going with this committee. A few months ago, we sat here, it's only a few weeks ago. We had a recommendation from our officers, which can be referred to tonight, another site in Hayward, and you voted against it. You picked every fly in the book. Tonight, I haven't heard anybody speak against the development yet, so the inspector must be watching this with gleeful appraisal. Anybody who knows this area, and I know it pretty well, a few years ago, the Stapper Rural Elms built some bungalows with no parking on this lane. This will cause a major problem once this development comes in. There is parking problems along there. Councillor Tavern has mentioned people who walk along there. There is problems. We've seen the road. It's a horse track. It's a horse and cart track. It's not a road. The main access, I believe, will create many problems. I believe that we should, we've got to be fair and, and, and 
and uh, respectful for everybody who puts in a planning application, we should treat them all the same. The neighbourhood plan is nearing completion, as it's been pointed out, and Eric Pickles is overturning some of our decisions. Not in this borough, of course. But if we, approve, if we approve this application, we'll have the alternative but to support the land opposite the, on the, the next site. So we will have no alternative. And if the road isn't suitable, so tough it will be. So I believe you should go out there and see this site and get the feel of what the, the local councils have raised. And I'm going to propose a site visit before you accept this recommendation. Thank you. I already have a proposition that the application be approved and seconded, so I think I'm right in saying that I cannot at this stage accept another proposition. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Actually, Chairman, I am sorry to have to correct you, but yes, in the matter of a site visit, um, if, if there's a seconder for uh, the suggestion of a site visit, um, that there could be a site visit, because that's, that's not negating the proposition that's already been made. So you need to see if there's a seconder. I'm always glad to be corrected. Anyone willing to second Councillor James's recommendation for a site visit? Councillor Stafford, Northcote. Right. Thank you. So can you give me the reasons, first of all, why you want a site visit? Because that's going to have to be recorded. The reason I'm a site visit is he gets an access of the site and the narrative where this development is going to take place. I believe we should go out there and get the ambient situation for ourselves. We've only seen photographs which I don't predict, we predict the true value of that site. Thank you very much indeed for those uh, statements. <coughs> Councillor Millicher. <coughs> I'd like to speak on this proposal for a site visit. Yeah. We've been out to the Haymans a number of times over the last month or two with regard to different applications. Uh, as Councillor James keeps telling us, he knows the area very well. Well, a lot of others do as well. And I do not see the value of delaying a decision on this application to go to a site that we all know. We know where the Haymans are. We don't need to go again. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members wish to debate this application? Uh, right, I'm advised I must take the um, site visit first. All those members in, in favour of the site visit, will they please show? Against? The site visit then is not agreed. The uh, proposition uh, put forward by Councillor Milcher, seconded by Councillor Jones, is to approve the outline application, and it is strictly an outline application uh, for access. All those in favour of that, but before I uh, take the vote, I'm going to ask the officer if they wish to make any further comments. In, in respect of the vote, um, I would like that to include the additional condition that I recommended. Would you remind us of? Certainly. Um, the recommendations in section 8 and conclusions outlined in section 9 of the submitted noise report from quarterly acoustics revision 1 dated the 9th of June 2014 should be implemented in full. Thank you, I accept that. Thank you very much indeed. Right, in, in accordance then with the officer's revised condition on there, all those in favour of the application being approved, please show. Against? Right, the application therefore in accordance with the officer's recommendation is approved. Now then, I'm going to change. If anybody wants to leave, could they do so now before we proceed? But I'm going to change the agenda now, just because. Councillor.